Remember this bike? Before the pandemic, I scored this perfectly good dirt jumper for $150. I gave it some cheap updates and made a video about it. This was my first dirt jump bike. It was a little rough around the edges, but I got it fixed up and running on a budget. And for a couple of years, it served me well. But it was eventually replaced by the Octane 1 Void, and then the Marin Alcatraz. So the tweet sat off in a corner of the garage collecting dust. But that made me sad. That bike had brought me a lot of enjoyment and was in need of some refreshing. So in the spirit of the original video, we're going to do it on a budget. The first task was to replace the headset bearings, which were sticking. I had assumed that maybe the head tube had ovaled out. This is a phenomenon where over time, the head tube develops an oval shape. This usually happens when a bike is ridden with a loose headset for an extended period of time. It isn't really a common problem these days, but after a little research I learned that the bike had the wrong headset bearing. The typical straight steer mountain bike headset bearings are 44 millimeters. It turns out that this bike takes a Campagnolo style headset, also known as a Campy. For good measure, I decided to punch out the star nut and install a new one. It turns out the star nut was a bigger pain than I expected. Big long metal rod for the win. Here I'm removing the old crown race. They're easy to remove with a hammer and a flathead screwdriver if you're careful. That one millimeter made all the difference between a loose fork and perfection. The next step was to true the wheels. After a few years of casing jumps and ledge hucks, the rear wheel needed a little love. At some point I decided to install a pair of Michelin Pilot Pump tires. Now these are 2.3 inch tires that look a lot bigger than the measurement implies. The problem on this bike is that they had a tendency to oversteer. Michelin's will be replaced with a pair of Kenda small block 8 tires at 26 by 2.1. These tires are wire bead and cost about $30 a piece. The smaller profile suits this bike a lot better and the knobs will be better on actual dirt, especially unmaintained jumps with loose dirt. With the wheels and tires out of the way, it was time to replace the crank set. The splines on the cranks were worn out and developed play from years of use. These are stolen brand Mob V4 cranks, an inexpensive three-piece crank set that came off the void. The bottom bracket is still in good shape, so this was an easy swap, and it'll last a while.
A while back, I was experimenting with different bar heights. The original 80mm rise bars were too high for my taste, so I swapped them for a 30mm rise set of race based bars. Well, I didn't care for either. Luckily, I had these Spank 40mm rise bars and this Truvative Husfeld 45mm stem laying around. I love these Truvative stems. They're a budget builder's dream. They're strong and they're cheap. This combo feels a lot better and it matches the frame nicely. For the final touch, I swapped out the seat for this brown seat from Cult. This came off the Octane 1, and finally we have matching touch points. This refresh was long overdue. So let's go over the total cost. If you've made it this far, hit that like button and the subscribe button. So did we keep this refresh affordable? Well, let's take a look. The Eastern bike headset was $20. Two Kenda tires, $60. Stolen mob V4 cranks from the parts bin, but if you bought them new, they're 70. Wheel truing, really my time, but most shops will do this for $20 to $30 a wheel, maybe less. Spank bars out of the parts bin, $40 if you buy new. Truvative stem, $25. Cult seat from the parts bin, $40 if you bought it new. Total of $255, not including the cost of wheel truing, since I do my own. And this assumes all parts are purchased new. If you buy these parts used, you'd save even more. On top of that, I'll sell some of the takeoff parts and recoup some of my costs. So let's say we recover $90 for a net cost of $165. Let's take a moment to enjoy this beauty. I love projects like this, and more so, it's why I love dirt jumpers. This chromoly spank tweet will last for years and is basically the price of a Walmart bike. And it just goes to prove you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a great time. I hope you enjoyed this leg of my journey. Thanks for watching.